This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 17, Endings and Beginnings. I skipped the Viz Top 10 last week in favor of all SDCC news, so this week it'll be a double dose of the best-selling digital titles at Viz Manga. First, for the week of July 16th, 2013, Shodan makes a comeback and takes the list as well as the number one spot. Nisekoi, Volume 4, debuts at the top. Itsuwari Bito, Volume 8, debuts on the list as well at number 2. Yukio Volume 2 debuts at number 3, and Bleach Volume 57 debuts at number 4. The first shoujo on the list appears at number 5 with From Far Away Volume 14. Blue Exorcist Volume 10 appears at number 6, and Shaman King Volume 31, the penultimate volume, comes in at number 7. Shoujo Repeat Beauty Pop comes in at number 8 with Volume 3. Kare First Love, often a top 5 title, comes in at number 9 with Volume 6, as another shoujo favorite, Red River, comes in at number 10 with Volume 15. The week of July 23, 2013, doesn't have much of a shake-up, though Shonen retakes its ratio of 7 to 3. There's a new number 1, and it belongs to the kid with the five-finger hairdo. Yu-Gi-Oh! Volume 3 moves up 1 from Volume 2's spot last week, trading places with Nisekoi Volume 4, which falls 1 to number 2. Debut shoujo Happy Hustle High Volume 1 comes in at number 3, while the new Kare First Love Volume 7 debuts at number 4. The final volume of Shaman King, Volume 32, replaces Volume 31 and moves up two spots from last week to number 5. Bleach Volume 57 falls two to number 6, while Case Closed returns to the list with Volume 21 coming in at number 7. Popular Shonen Black Cat returns as well with Volume 5 coming in at number 8, while Popular Shoujo Red River Volume 16 moves up one from Volume 15 spot at number 10 to number 9. And Blue Exorcist Volume 10 falls four to number 10, ending the list for the week. I wonder where all the shonen readers were for the last few weeks. Shoujo was really dominating for a while, but now shonen has reasserted its dominance. Could shoujo have seen a strong showing because of all the new shoujo releases? And now that there are some shonen titles coming out, the shonen readers are back? It's an interesting trend. Following Yu-Gi-Oh's debut a few weeks ago, another Yu-Gi-Oh title debuts this week. Yu-Gi-Oh! R. This is a spin-off title that takes place between Duelist and Millennium World. Pegasus's protege wants to take revenge on Yugi for defeating his teacher. He captures Anzu, and Yugi and Jochi must duel their way up Kaiba Corp to rescue her. It's a short series at only five volumes and focuses on the duels as Yugi and Jonochi fight professors with theme decks. Duelist fans will enjoy this one. I was really disappointed when I heard this next bit of news. The sports manga series Cross Manage about a girls lacrosse team ended in July. It was one of the new titles that joined Weekly Shonen Jump USA last October, and in my opinion, was the best of the new ones. This thought seemed borne out as Barrage and Takagahara dropped out and was well received by US fans, a rarity for sports manga. But it just didn't seem to make the cut in Japan. The series will end at five volumes, with the final one coming out in November in Japan. Cross Manage followed Sakurai, a high school student with no real direction. He meets Toyoguchi, the captain of the girls' lacrosse team, who convinces him to be their manager. Toyoguchi's endless enthusiasm gets Sakurai to start to engage with people again. I really enjoyed the series from the first chapter. The characters were fun, and I was looking forward to watching them develop. Zero Seven is a manga title that's had a bumpy road in the U.S. Originally licensed by defunct manga publisher Gokami, the series was recently rescued by Viz Media. Now it's been announced that the series will end in August. It had a good run in Japan. It runs in monthly Comic Zero, which also gave us Sayuki, and just had its 16th volume published. It also got a 26-episode anime in 2009. The story follows orphan slave Taito, who inherited a special power from his father. Enrolled in the Barsberg Military Academy, he learns that he is being hunted and escapes to a church where he finds sanctuary. There he becomes embroiled in the battle between the God of Death, Verloren, and seven ghosts, beings of light sent to stop him. 
I enjoyed the manga when it came out from Gokami and was thrilled when Viz picked it up. I can't say how happy I am to see it end, but hopefully this just means that the story has reached its natural end. I'm looking forward to reading more. La Corte de Oro is another series I've enjoyed. It's based on the first game from a series of Otomo dating sims and just finished its 17-volume run from Viz in May. Ending in August is another manga based on another game in the series. Linden Hall Aria, La Corte de Oro series, is based on the third game of the series and follows Kanade and her relationship with the boys in the school orchestra, her Linden Hall, and other dormitories. The series will be complete at four volumes. I'm hoping the series gets licensed. It's only four volumes long, and is part of a series familiar to U.S. audiences, and is by the same artist as the first series, so it shouldn't be too hard of a sell. I also just love the musical setting and Otomo game adaptations in general. I've had mixed feelings about Naoki Urasawa's work. I loved Pluto to death, but wasn't impressed with 20th Century Boys. This new one-shot he's doing for Big Comic Magazine's 45th anniversary sounds like the former. Titled Kaiju Okoku, or Monster Kingdom, Japan has become the number one tourist nation by cashing in on its biggest and most well-known assets. This sounds like an awesome premise, and I would love to read it when it comes out. Kaiju have been getting a lot of attention lately, with talk of a new Godzilla movie and Pacific Rim. So a Japanese manga about Kaiju would just be icing on the cake. The only way it could get better is if it became a regular series and was licensed for same-day release. Kazuya Minekura picked up quite a following in the U.S. with her titles Sayuki and Wild Adapter. One of the unfortunate things about being a manga creator, though, is that it can take a toll on your health. Minekura has had such problems. Back in April, her prequel series to Sayuki, Sayuki Ibun, which follows the priest who would become the teacher to Sanzo in the first Sayuki series, was put on hiatus. But fans of her modern tale, Wild Adapter, could rejoice in its return around the same time. While the latest news on Miyakura is that both Wild Adapter, again, and Sayuki Reload Blast, the third continuation of the Sayuki manga, would be put on an irregular schedule due to her health issues. The good news is that the titles aren't being put on hiatus, but a regular schedule can sometimes be about the same. I do wish Miyakura well and hope she does recover, but what makes this news disappointing to me is that these titles are less likely to be licensed or license rescued. Zero Seven Ghost Rescue made me think that there might be hope for Sayuki, but now I'm not so sure. A series that might not be completed won't get rescued no matter how much fans would want it. Seven Seas Entertainment has gone Alice in the Country of Crazy. This week they announced the license of four more Alice in the Country of titles. Alice in the Country of Clover, Nightmare, gets Alice together with Nightmare in a side story. Alice in the Country of Clover, March's Hair, does about the same thing, but with the March Hair in the Clover world. We return to the Country of Hearts with Love, Labyrinth of Thorns, and puts Alice with Julian again. He already had a shot at Alice in the Clockmaker story, but it seems he gets another chance. Alice in the Country of Clover, Knight's Knowledge, puts Alice with Ace, the knight from the Hearts Castle. With these four titles, Seven Seas will now be publishing a new Alice title monthly for the next year. I'm not usually interested in shipping side stories, but I liked Alice in the Country of Hearts, My Fanatical Rabbit, so I would entertain the thought of reading a few more. But I keep it to the characters I like, Elliot and Julius. Sparkler Magazine is a new online magazine from independent publisher Chromatic Press. The magazine is aimed at a female demographic, though anyone who enjoys shoujo or jose will enjoy it. It features serialized stories as manga, prose, and audio drama. The first official issue debuted this week with the new manga title, Dire Hearts, and the continuation of Offbeat with Chapter 13. There is also a new prose series, Gauntlet, the fifth chapter of the second book of the prose series Tokyo Demons, and the first chapter of the audio drama Awake. While the magazine is free to read, there is also premium content that only paying subscribers can get access to. It's only $5 a month to subscribe, though you can also just buy single issues. This month, the premium content is an article about tips that can get your work in Sparkler. I love the idea behind Sparkler. I've missed a female-oriented magazine ever since Shoujo B closed down, and the way they are taking advantage of being online to do different formats, it's great. It's very forward-looking. Take some time to check it out. It doesn't hurt to look when it's free. 
Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at manga xanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.